All right, here we go. So the first time we see Meech is at the funeral. Now, remember, on Are We Ready, I talked about there might potentially be three funerals. Now, I was saying that three funerals is too much, but I like how they put uh, Brian and Kevin's a little, you know what I'm saying, a little passing with, with Terry's. Now, when this was going on, this is uh, the little Milton. Now, we all know that little Milton had that Thule, but little Milton wouldn't put Little Milton was supposed to take that thing. Like, imagine, imagine if y'all seen, let's just say, 12 year old me from all the stories y'all know, me getting kicked out of school, me getting, uh, yeah, kicked out of school, uh, fighting, getting suspended, getting arrested. Like, my 12 year old life. Imagine if y'all knew Mo. Like, at that time, I wasn't even little Mo back then. I was just little Julius. I was just a little nigga that was fucking up. Imagine if y'all knew 12 year old me. What would 12-year-old me do if he had that Thule in his hand? Let me know what y'all think 12-year-old me would have done if I would have had that Thule in my hand. Now, I ain't touched no gun until I was like 15, 16 years old. But it, what'd you think, what you think I would have done at 11 years old with that thing? You know what I mean? Like, let's be real. What, what y'all think Mo would have done with that thing, man? Because y'all know in, what was it, sixth grade, I got expelled for stabbing a nigga. So I think I was, what, 11 years old? What y'all think Mo would have did with that thing in 11? Man, nigga. Man, if I would have had my hand on a gun in 12th grade, like, I don't know, not 12th grade. Definitely not in 12th grade. I had one. If I would have had my hand on a gun at, like, 12 years old. Oh. Nigga, there may have been nine, ten bodies. Well, I probably wouldn't have got that many bodies. But, nigga, I would have been a goddamn fool with that thing. I was already a. Listen, niggas already was making fun of me because my head was cracked wide open. Nigga, I would have had a gun back then. Oh, shit. Well, nobody ever said nothing about me. Fop, fop, fop. Nigga, I would have been letting that motherfucker loose. They talk about, God damn, that nigga Mo. We need to put, they would have been like, we need to send this nigga Mo to Afghanistan. This nigga can go get Saddam himself, nigga. 12-year-old me with a tool. Oh, nigga. I would have been goddamn Rambo at that bitch. You think Kevin was a bad motherfucker? Oh, nigga, I would have... Shit. Nigga, I'd have been walking around school with that bitch. The principal, hey, you can't have that. Nigga, say something. Nah, I'm just bullshitting y'all, man. I ain't I ain't play with no guns back then. It was, I, I ain't touched my first gun until I was 50. Well, I, I, I shot a rifle at, like, 13. But I ain't touched, like, my first pistol until, like, 15. So. Kira said, I would have been standing there, damn, you trying to say I would have went out like Kev? I mean, like Milton? That's fucked up. I thought me and you was cool, Miss Kira. I thought me and Miss Kira, we went way back. But now, nah, Miss Kira talking about I would have been standing in the doorway. Nigga, not calling you a nigga, Miss Kira. I'm just saying nigga in general. You know everybody's a nigga in my book. Yeah, I'd have, man, damn, that's fucked up. Miss Kira said I'd have been standing in the doorway. Damn, Miss Kira saying I would have got killed. And I would have died in bullets, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. So me shows up and he's trying to talk to uh, damn. Remy. Remy and the dude Clyde. Now, this is the first time I'm hearing Clyde's name. So Clyde is the guy on the left. Give me a sec. All right, so, um, damn, fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the dude's name. The nigga's name is Clyde. I mean, we got Remy, we drinking Remy, but we already said Remy keep fucking around. They gonna turn that nigga into Hennessy. So, me shows up to Little Milton's funeral. Me shows up and like on some real shit. This is some. This is a bold ass move. Now I give Meech a hundred percent credit for this because he shows up and he's. I mean, we understand ain't nothing gonna pop off at a funeral. 
Now there is, I mean, I, I, well, I've never seen, like, I've never witnessed it in real life, but I did witness in Chicago, there was like a funeral, like maybe five, eight years ago, niggas got to shooting at the funeral and kill. Well, they didn't kill, but they shot like a nigga. I think that nigga is uh, Wooski or whatever the fuck. I, I, I don't know none of that shit. Like Kansas City wasn't that bad. Kansas City is bad, but we like, I mean, if niggas like my car, I'm, my car only got hit two times in my lifetime. And that's when I was trying to drive up out of there, but we were stuck in traffic. So that that's the only time my car ever got hit. Kansas City was different, though. I mean, you got to think when I was growing up, like the early, like early 2000s, it wasn't really too much shooting. I mean, niggas was shooting. I know some niggas that died, but niggas wasn't really shooting like that. It was more doing some fighting. But me shows up to Remy Ransom, uh, not his funeral, but Remy Ransom is taking care of little Milton. And we know little Milton was in the room when Meech was in the room. Remember, Meech. When he came in the room, the two dudes came through that back room and oh boy, he killed him. And Meech was in the room and then Meech ended up dipping out. So Remy's over here and we got Clyde also. And Clyde, he's listening to Meech and he's like, okay, Meech is making sense. But Remy, he hears what Meech is talking about. Like, nah, fuck that. Because Remy got a lot of pride. Remember, Remy is the top dog when it comes to Techwood. And that's one thing about being the top dog. Like, I've never, to be honest with you, like none of the neighborhoods that I lived in or none of the niggas I was associated with, I was never, I was never the top dog. And I'm appreciative of that because it's like, man, making those kind of decisions is like, nigga, you can get either everybody killed or niggas is going to turn on you. So for me, like I said, I was never in no gangs or nothing. And in Kansas city, it wasn't, I mean, we had gangs, but it was more like your streets. So where my parents lived at, like I was in South KC the school I went to was a hood school before we lost accreditation and we moved to the suburbs for my junior and senior year. Like, I mean, I, I, I knew, I knew all like all the hood niggas. And I knew all the niggas like in the city that I could hang with and didn't hang with, but I was never like me personally. I was never into like none of that hood shit. I know growing up where me, my mom and my sister lived before my mom married my dad. Like we lived in the hood. I told y'all the story. They robbed my mama house. They took my crib. They like they literally took my crib. They took our TV. They ran up in the house because it was me, my mom, and my oldest sister. Because my second sister that y'all hear that get on the line, Sharice, that's my dad's daughter. So my dad was living a different life than with me, my mom, and my oldest sister was. So when they robbed us, they took my crib. They took our TV. They took the phone off the wall. And I just remember all that from my sister telling me all that shit. But like I was, I was just a kid, so I was on like two, two, three. Miss Kira said a peace offering. Hey, Miss Kira, you know I love you. Thank you for that for that four night. Thank you for that four ninety nine. Hey, anytime I could drink with somebody, hey man, I, I love y'all. When we get, when we can have a drink together, so Kansas, like I said, Kansas City was different. As a as a youth, where I grew up before my mom married my dad, yeah, we was out in the hood. It was me, my mom, and my oldest sister, and then I had my aunt and my four cousins. They lived out there also before my uh, my aunt ended up passing away, and then my four cousins became my brothers. So yeah, like my lifestyle growing up was tough too. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, I don't ever glorify any of that because eventually my mom and my dad ended up getting married before they had my little brother. You know, I ended up moving out to like the well, it wasn't the suburbs at that time where I where I moved at with my mom and dad were living together. We were still in basically the hood. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are still getting killed over there. Niggas are still on crack and shit. But I mean, that's where I lived at. It was better than where I was at when I it was just me, my mom, and my sister. So me shows up here and me just trying to say, hey, just like Terry with Henry, I got a peace offering. Listen. I'm trying to make sure that y'all are good. Listen, we can get y'all some money. We team up against the Miami Killers. I told you last week before they ambushed us that, hey, we can get some money together. But Remy ain't trying to hear it. But Claude is like, man, it's a lot of beef going on. Now, there was a point in my life where I was into it with niggas. And I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like that shit, it 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 wears on you, man. Like knowing you gotta go out and look over your back, like it was 
it wasn't to the point where I thought niggas would like shoot me or like kill me. I mean, it got to that point, but for the most part, it was just if I was to go like to my sister's house, I knew niggas over there. I was into it with. You just get tired of like having to fight niggas, man. That 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 lifestyle is just fucking it just drains on you. Like it wasn't in probably till like 2007, 2008, where I'm riding around. It's like niggas might kill me. Then that's why I moved out of that's why I always tell y'all in 2009, my sister saved my life. She moved to Atlanta. And if my sister never moved to Atlanta, I would have been in Kansas City, man. I would have I would have probably been dead, man, because I was into it with niggas. But my sister moved to Atlanta. And when she moved to it, well, she didn't move to Atlanta. She lived in Lithonia. And um, she moved to Lithonia. And then me and my brother moved to Lithonia. I got laid off in 09. I told y'all 09. I left. I left Kansas City, moved down there. And I uh we lived on the second floor. My sister lived on the third floor. She saved my life. I mean, niggas ended up breaking into my car and stole like my goddamn in dash TV and shit, but they didn't give like my hair rest or my speak. Well, no, they took my speakers. They it is what it is, but I didn't have to worry about niggas like shooting at me or no shit like that. So I always like whenever I get a chance to thank my sister, man, she's the one that told me to start doing lives on YouTube. Like I always my sister Tanika, that's always something that is always going to touch me, man, because man, she saved my life, man. And if it wasn't for her, even before she passed, she was the one she saved my life, told me to move to Atlanta with her. And then like, Shit, two months before she passed, she's like, man, go live on your YouTube channel. And ever since then, I've been going live. So I always I always just think about that. Like, my sister really saved my life, man. I was on some bullshit in life. but So if it wasn't for her, then shit, nigga, yeah, man, I, yeah, niggas would have killed me. So Meech is showing up, and Meech is like, man, look, I got, I'm trying to squash the beef, bruh. Now, after that, we see Meech go back to Duffy's house. Now, when he goes to Duffy's house, this is the same crib where they got robbed when Stax was over there. So we got to keep this shit going. We can't be sentimental because y'all go like, oh, nigga, more bitch ass nigga, man. That nigga, more over here crying again, man. That nigga, bitch. We all know Mo ain't no bitch. You know what I'm saying? Mo got to do what he got to do. Now, we get to Duffy's crib. And Duffy's over here giving a speech like, man, Rip was the real nigga, man. We got to hold it together, y'all. We got to hold it down. Now, Meech ends up showing up, and he tells Duffy straight up, he's like, hey, Duffy, listen, I went over to Remy Ransom and them for the funeral. He's like, damn, you went over there? He's like, hell yeah, I went over there. Because he's trying to make shit happen. And that's what I respect about Meech. If y'all know me, I've told y'all, I'm, hey, everywhere I go, it's not because I want to go, it's because I'm trying to network. It's because I'm trying to, like, okay, if there's some attractive women, I might go in there, you know, I might do my thing, I might try to holler at some, but Nine times out of ten, if I'm going somewhere, I'm trying to holler like the DJ. I'm trying to find out whoever the promoter is. Because I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, man. All that other shit going to come with it. I'm trying to get this money. I'm not, like like I told you, I don't have to work. If I don't want to, I quit this shit now and I move somewhere and I'm done. But I'm here and I'm networking so I can stay in Europe so I can start traveling to countries I ain't ever been to. So Duffy is talking to Meech and they're just, they just gave love to Rip. But Meech is saying, hey, listen. I'm trying to plant my seed over with Claude. Now, Claude is the right-hand man to Remy. If we can get Remy on our side, I'm not Remy, if we can get Claude on our side, plant that seed, let that blossom pause on all of that shit because it does sound iffy. But if we can plant that seed, have it blossom, we can take out Remy. But then we can start getting the rest of the crew to fuck with goddamn Claude. And then from Claude, we good to go and i'm like damn that is a good plan now remember i always told y'all i was expecting bmf to team up with the miami killers to go at techwood but this is a whole reverse situation but it's the same exact situation that i was predicting in episode three so what he's trying to do is backdoor techwood take out remy bring clyde in make clyde a boss the same way he's doing with Duffy, because remember, Meech is leaving this episode to go to St. Louis. Duffy is going to be in charge. Now, if Duffy is in charge and then we got Clyde in charge of Techwood, we all eaten. Everybody got their role. So Meech is very, very smart and he's very meticulous with how he's moving. So you're looking at Meech is like, damn, this ain't that, it ain't that bad of a move. But we just got to watch it play out. 
Now, the next time we see Meech after this, Oh, okay. So Meech tells everybody, hey, come to the crib. We got a repass. Now, the repass is for uh, Rip. Now, we know ain't nobody, like, let's be real. Put a three in the chat if you listen in to Rip. Put a seven in the chat if you like Mo and you don't give a fuck what Rip talking about. We ain't listening to that shit. Put a three in the chat if you listen in to Rip. Put a seven in the chat if you don't give a fuck what Rip talking about. No disrespect to Rip, but I'm just saying, ain't nobody listening to no goddamn Rip forever. Rip ain't no Pac, nigga. Put a three in the chat if you listen to that nigga Rip. Put a seven in the chat if you ain't fucking with that motherfucking shit, man. We ain't trying to hear that shit, Meech. Uh, there you go. See, that's why That's why I fuck with Miss Cure. Me and Miss Cure, we had our little disagreement like 10, 15 minutes ago. But me and Miss Cure, we on the same page. Ain't nobody listening to that Rip shit. Rip, nigga, ain't nobody listening. Who the fuck is Rip, nigga? R.I.P. That nigga dead. Oh, it would make sense, nigga. Why would you name yourself Rip, nigga? If you ain't about that life, nigga, ain't nobody trying to listen to no Rip, nigga. That's like me naming myself uh the devil. Like, nigga, if I die, I'm like, well, nigga, your name was the devil. Like, my name ain't the devil. My name is Mo. That means Mo life. That means uh Mo money. That means uh Mo liquor. That means uh Mo money. They talking about the devil. Like, no, I don't want that name. <laughs> nah, Demarcus D uh, Duffy and uh, Laz, they did not They did not snitch. Now, we haven't got to that point yet, but at this point, we're having a repass, and Meech is basically saying, fuck everybody. Now, we're going to speed up this little process because we know about Meech's story. We know Meech has the plot armor, but it's Meech's story. We know Meech is in jail, but Meech had a 22-year run. So we got to continue from this because, I mean, we ain't really talking about nothing at this point. But what we do, one thing we got to point out so we can continue the story, Meech tells Tina, hey, I need you to get more clientele. But he also tells Duffy, because this is putting Duffy in the position to be that leader, hey, Duffy, I need you to bet every single member that Tina brings in. Now that means it, it could be niggas from the strip club. It could be you bitch ass niggas from the block. It could be any niggas. But if you're gonna come into the organization, we gotta make sure that you are solid and you're not gonna say anything. Now, I don't know. I don't know how many of y'all niggas is battle tested. And I don't know how many niggas we can trust. Like me, I don't get in no like right now, from the age of from the age of twenty eight to thirty eight, I haven't gotten in any legal trouble. I showed y'all my documentation. I beat my Article fifteen, four years in jail in Leavenworth. I showed y'all my DUI Article fifteen. They tried to hit me with. I beat that shit. Listen, I don't get in trouble no more, but I can guarantee you, in all of my lifetime. Y'all heard my mama get on here, and my mama even told y'all she was crying when them niggas jumped me. She told me to go file a police report. She cried. My mama got on her knees and cried because I told my mama I ain't no bitch-ass nigga, and I ain't going to the police and telling the police nothing that happened. My mama cried. My mama begged me to go tell the police about the niggas that jumped me and took my, my nigga. Not saying I'm the toughest nigga on the block, but y'all know that I'm not doing none of that bullshit. Now, at this point, if a nigga come and rob me, oh, yeah, hey, I got to, hey, 911, I'm going to be honest with you, nigga. I'm goddamn 38. My nigga, my hip then gave out. I couldn't chase the nigga down. The nigga had a gray jacket on. The nigga, he, he went by a nigga named Ray Ray. That nigga, yeah, nigga, hell no, I can't chase no niggas. I, well, I can, but nigga. If a nigga robbed me now, oh, yeah, I'm filing a police report, nigga. I got to get that. But back in the day, I didn't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. I wasn't telling no shit. And y'all heard Mama Mo get on here. Mama Mo done got on here and told y'all many times. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> y'all heard my mama talking about go file a police report. She's like, well, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it's not good. I'm glad you didn't go because niggas, man, niggas would have been at the crib. Niggas knew where I live. And if I wasn't there, niggas would kill my parent. Like, come on, man. I'm not about to tell on nobody. 
<laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, niggas just grow up in different situations. I, I like not even saying that I grew up in a like my parents. My parents did a pretty good job with us, but man, nigga. I mean, I was just fucking off. I was, I was a nigga, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was really on me. All right, let's continue on. All right, so Meech has the repass. And y'all know, y'all, y'all get me telling like actual stories. Y'all be wanting to hear the more stories than y'all do one on the show. All right, so after this, and we, you know, I'm always calling Meech out. So after they leave here, they following Duffy. They like, all right, we're going to hit up the club because, you know, we always got to hit the strip club. Now, Duffy ends up getting pulled over by the Red Dogs. Get your bitch ass out the car, nigga. Hands up, hands up. Duffy like, oh, nigga, what the hell going on? I ain't got nothing. I ain't did nothing. The police don't give a fuck about none of that. They don't give a fuck about none of that. They slamming this nigga head on the car. Bow, get your bitch ass down, you bitch ass nigga. Like, damn, nigga, what I do? What I do? He's um, he talking about, you violated my rights. Now, I told y'all, so I got... I got two 87 Cutlass, 442s, two old schools, nice old schools. So we went up to Firestone. I, I dropped my shit off to get an oil change. I, I told y'all this story before. They pulled my brother over. Now, I got I got classic cars. So they only got their back license plates. But in the state of Missouri, you got to have front and back. So when Meech sees Duffy get pulled over, he's sitting in the back. I make a right on my street. The police hit their lights on my brother. In my uh my 87, the good 87. Not not my not no 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 not y'all don't understand. I don't think y'all understand what the fuck going on. Not my bullshit 87, not the 87 with goddamn parts on it. My good 87. I'm talking about paint job, interior done. I got a 455 in that bitch. So they pulled my brother over it, and he don't get to make it down my block. This one right here. This my colors right here that they pull my brother over in. This motherfucker clean as a motherfucker. If y'all want to buy this one, y'all want y'all want this one. You want this eighty seven colors right here, four forty two. I'm letting that motherfucker go for twenty two thousand dollars cash. And if you hey, if you can come up with twenty bands, I give you to you for twenty bands. Now my Camaro back here, you can get this motherfucker for a sweet twelve thousand cash. It's fifteen thousand, but if you want that motherfucker, you can get it right now twelve thousand cash. Holla at your boy. We have that mother. Well, if you want to ship to you, it's gonna be another twelve hundred and fifty. But goddamn it, we'll get them to you. But this is the colors that they pulled my brother over in, and the reason they pulled my brother over it was a white cop, bitch ass motherfucker too. Then nigga pulled him over and said he smelled weed when my brother drove by. Now, this is my classic car. This ain't my park car. I don't smoke no weed or nothing in that motherfucker. So they pulled my brother over. It's the next block over. I'm calling my mom like, hey, ma, you got to you gotta get the lawyer on the phone. They pull my brother over. They pull him out. And I, I walk over there because I'm at the crib. I pulled up to the crib. My brother went to the next block because they, they hit him with the lights. I walk over there. I'm like, hey, that's my car. They're like, hey, you need to stand back. We 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 investigating him. I'm like, nigga, that's my car. We just picked that shit up from Firestone. I'm getting the oil change on that hoe. So they like, nah, nah, you gotta stay back. So they they doing a little drug test on my brother. They talking about stick your tongue out. They saying he got a white tongue. So it seems like he spoke weed. My little brother's only like fucking 17 years old. He ain't smoking no weed and nothing. And nigga ain't smoking no shit in my car. So. Long story short, I'm calling my like, hey, my, you got to get him up there. Because I went over to the car. The dude, uh, his partner told me, hey, you got to back up. I'm like, nigga, that's my car. The, like, the registration and shit is in my name. So we end up going up to the police station and shit. But you got to remember, this is like the early 2000s. It's not like now. If it was now, then we could file all kinds of uh, complaints and sue niggas. So this is probably like. I got that car in 2004. So this is probably like 2005, 2006. We go up to the police station. They tell you, no, no, well, he said he smelled marijuana. I'm like, there's no way he smelled marijuana. That's, this is a show car, man. Look at this motherfucker. This is a show car, nigga. I don't smoke no weed in this shit. I mean, and long story short, nothing happened. Like, I mean, but where, where we was living, I told you, we moved to the suburbs. So shit was a little bit different. Like, I mean, them white folks had the goddamn city on lock and shit. But now they ain't they ain't got no pool like that because we got we got real lawyers when we in the city. 
But yeah, man, they, they got my brother on some bullshit. Try to pull him over. He ain't get no ticket now. He ended up getting dismissed. But yeah, the nigga was in my car picking my shit up. You know what I'm saying? I took him up there. He drove my shit back. So all that shit be bullshit, man. Yeah, so he he pulled he told my brother to stick his tongue out and his tongue was he said oh it was white so that means I like nigga get your and I'm sitting right there but the they end up so I end up getting put other ends up getting put in handcuffs so I'm sitting there and I'm trying to argue like hey bro that's my car like I'm telling you he ain't do nothing in that and we live the next block over like literally if you go down two houses and make a right the uh you go down two houses and then make a right two houses is where we lived at. So I'm calling my mom. My mom was a paralegal at the time. I'm like, hey, ma, they, these niggas is tripping. I mean, we end up getting all this shit, like, dismissed. Nothing happened. But it's like, man, these motherfuckers, bro. He just seen a nigga in a goddamn classic car with, like, and the shit was registered to a goddamn 23-year-old. So you seeing me, I done put what fucking, you know what I'm saying? I done put 10000 in that motherfucker. Like the everything, like man, come on, man. It's just some bullshit. But that's the that 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 came with us living in the suburbs, man. That I mean, it is what it is. But it was still, still a better lifestyle than what we had when we was living before we moved out there. But anyway, all right. Next time we see Meech, Duffy gets arrested. Meech ends up driving off. Meech meets up with Clyde. Now Meech meets up with Clyde at this diner, and the reason they at the diner. What up, hoodie? Hey, shout out to Jay Hood. Hey, Jay Hood, that's my nigga I grew up with. I told y'all. So Jay Hoodie, he's my homeboy's little brother. Before I uh before I moved to Atlanta, Jay Hoodie would tell you. I mean, I gave him probably about $300, $400 worth of shoes. You got to remember, this is like uh 2000, 2008, 2009. I gave that nigga like all kinds of dunks. I gave that nigga some J's. They're probably like three, four hundred dollars worth of shoes. But shout out to Jay Hoodie. Man, that's my young boy right there. Well, I can't even call him a young boy. He's disrespectful. He's a grown ass man now. He's probably like 30 now. Shout out to Jay Hood. That's my dog, though, man. That's hey, that's my boy. I, I grew up with him. I remember he was a little like he used to be a little kid. When we when we were growing up, we would go over to we would go over to his house. His house was bigger than ours. So in his basement, we go down there, we'd be down there, we playing like poker and shit. We playing like PlayStation. And he was he was young, so he's like in elementary, middle school. And his mom used to he <laughs> she used to then let him hang with like the like the the, the adults because we were like 17, 18. So he's at the hang upstairs, but every now and then he'll come downstairs. But that's my nigga Jay Hoodie, man. And like everything I'm telling y'all is facts, man. Jay Hoodie will tell you, man, before I before I moved out to like Atlanta, man, I get that nigga like five hundred dollars worth of shoes. That's that's my nigga. That like that's my dog's little brother. So it's like, man, fuck it. You want these shoes, man? You got them. Like, that's my nigga. So, like, everything I'm telling y'all, I'm not going to bullshit you. I, I mean, I bullshit you. I bullshit y'all 90% of the time, but I'm always going to keep it real with you. You know what I'm saying? Every story I tell y'all, I can back it up with facts. So, but nah, J Hoodie, that's my nigga, man. So, show love to J Hoodie. I don't even. Oh, 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 we meet Noah Clyde. So me just meeting up with Clyde. Now he's at this little diner. Now I had, I had a, um, I had a photo, but we ain't gonna do that because we're gonna try to get this done before five hours, four nineteen. Yeah, we're gonna get this because it's what thirty minutes right now. All right. So me is at the diner. The old lady talking about, hey, people, they come and try this. They gonna always enjoy it. Now that was a foreshadow for what he's gonna talk to Clyde. He's telling Clyde, hey, listen. What I want you to do is bring in on all the Atlanta crews, but we got to get rid of Remy Ransom. Remy Ransom is bad for, you know, saying bad for everything because he wants to get blood in the streets. But if I give you some work, you give it to the crews, then we'll be able to move forward. Now, Clyde is saying, how's that going to, you know, saying how's that going to benefit me? He's like, nigga, I'm going to boss you up. And if we get rid of Remy, we are right to go. So Clyde got to make the decision. Do he stay true to Remy or does he get on with Meech? And I'm thinking, man, we might as well go with Meech. We might as well go with Meech. And that's, I mean, that's what the fuck we do. But Meech tells him straight up, just like the old lady said. Remember I told you about the foreshadowing like three minutes ago? Or maybe it might have been two minutes ago. I can't remember. I ain't got a clock on me. But two minutes ago, I told you guys about the foreshadowing. The old lady said, hey, when we give you this, once you try it, you always come back. Meech said, hey, I got pure Coke. 
once you try this, you always come back. So now it's got Clyde like, okay, cool. Let me see what you got then. Let's let's make it happen. Now, the next time we see Meech, it's Meech, Duffy, and Angel. Because Duffy got arrested and they're trying to figure out what's going on. Duffy comes back, beat the fuck up. Now, I ain't never been beat up where my eye. Like, I got beat up. I like, I ain't going to lie to you. Y'all know I had one good ass whooping. Now, I lost three fights in my life. Like, three certified fights I lost. But there's only been one time. There's only been one time. And I've told y'all, there's only been one time in my life that I can verify a nigga whoop my ass. I'm talking about I ain't stand a chance. I'm a, I'm I'm real with y'all. Nigga beat the shit out of me, nigga. But one thing you can say is that nigga Mo ain't back down. Nigga, I fought that nigga. That nigga beat the fuck out of me. I'm talking about nigga. I is knotted up. But nigga, I lived to fight another day. And after we fought that time, probably like three, four months later, when I seen that nigga, we ain't have no issues. Me and him never had any issues after that. After that nigga whooped my ass one good time, because he knew I like, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought I, man, I told y'all that story. I thought I had this nigga. I'm like, all right, I can get this. Thing. The nigga was nonchalant about it. Me and this nigga fighting. He ain't really like throwing too much. I'm like, boom, boom, I'm connected. Man, when I tell you this nigga, for some reason, I don't know if it's like a video game, this nigga powered up. This nigga hit me so hard, Paul. I said, God. Damn, nigga, I wanted to quit. I almost dropped. Like, God, what the fuck? This nigga, God damn. So at this point, I'm just swinging. I'm trying to stay afloat at this point. This nigga proceeded to put his foot in my ass. This nigga, I'm like, God damn, this nigga, God damn. I couldn't fight back, but I'm standing up. I'm like, nigga, don't fall. Hey, when I'm telling you, when this nigga got finished, oh, my God. Girls are talking about me. You held your own. I told all them hoes, nigga, why ain't nobody break that shit up? I'm leaking. I'm like, God damn, nigga, why ain't nobody break this bitch up? Nigga, y'all knew I was undermatched. God, I'm in that motherfucker. I'm hurt. I'm in that motherfucker like this, y'all. Hey, real talk. This is hey, this is real talk. I, I've only had my ass whooped one good time in life. Now I, I lost I lost three fights in my life. But this one I had nigga. After that nigga got done whooping, I'm in that motherfucker like nigga. Oh shit. The girls are, oh, you was holding your own, mo. I like bitch. Why you ain't break that motherfucker up, nigga? You see this motherfucker leaking. Nigga, I couldn't leave the house for like two weeks, bro. That nigga beat the fuck out of me. I ain't gonna lie to you. But I ain't no nigga that's gonna lie to you. That nigga beat the shit out of me. This is probably like 2000. This is like 2006, dog. I had to go to work the next day, dog. That nigga beat the fuck out of me, bro. Paul's on the beating the fuck out. That nigga whooped my ass, nigga. But shit. Everybody knew that nigga Mo wasn't gonna back down, man. I I, I went in that motherfucker, put him up, put him up. That nigga, wow, like, damn, nigga. Oh no, <laughs> help, <laughs> please. I can't see shit, nigga. That motherfucker left eye was goddamn leaking. Ah, oh well, but. I like I've never been I never been one I never been one that's like man you know you know you you get around man, I'm on the feet of like nigga all right well I done fall some niggas that didn't whoop my ass nigga I, I I got I got three ass whoopings in life well I technically I lost four and I got one real ass whooping that's when I realized that I'm not as tough as I think I am and that nigga really beat the shit out of me but I don't give a fuck, man. Like, nigga, I fought the nigga. Like, it, it, as far as, like, when it came to, like, niggas in the streets, they like, okay, nigga, most don't fight. You would never. Like, when I, I told you I went to CMSU, uh, it was probably about three on, it was three on probably, like, six, seven. I told y'all, like, as soon as them niggas came over there, it wasn't no talk. I just punched a white boy 
because I remember the white boy when they jumped me. Like, man, I don't give a fuck about it. I don't, I don't, if we gonna fight, I don't care about losing in a fight. Like, no one can say anything like, hey, nigga, both guys that. Yeah, I did, nigga, but shit, I fought. See, I don't give a fuck. So I only, I only been shot, well, I've been shot at probably about like four times, but as far as my car getting hit, my car only been hit twice. So yeah, the other two are just like niggas shooting in our direction. But anyway, let's continue on. Uh, Meech and Duffy. Oh yeah. So when Meech is with Duffy, this is when we find out that Greeny has been arrested and Greeny has given up information. Hey. So, hey, shout out to Jay Hoodie. So what Jay Hoodie is talking about, the IHOP parking lot in Grandview, I wasn't there. I was at the house. So the IHOP getting shot up in Grandview, that's where we was at. That's uh, the, well, the suburbs of where we moved. So the IHOP getting shot up in Grandview, my little brother was there. So my brother got into it with some niggas. And I'm at the crib. I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm at the house. I'm toasted. So my little brother, he up at the IHOP. And niggas get to fighting up there, and they get to shooting. Now, right outside of IHOP, it's a, uh, it's like an annex road, but then it's the highway. So my brother ended up like, they they get to fighting out there, and then my brother ends up <laughs> running across the annex, and he jumped across, and he ran across the highway because niggas was in that motherfucker. Bah, 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 bah. They shooting this shit. So this nigga ended up getting home. He telling me about it. Then I got some niggas that I knew that was like, yeah, nigga, it was going down up there. I'm like, damn, nigga, my little brother. Because when my little brother got home, he's like, man, they was shooting up at IHOP. I'm like, nigga, shut up. Because, you know, I'm on the couch. I'm stuck. And nigga, like, nah, man, for real, for real. So my homeboy hit me like, nah, nigga, they shooting up this bitch. It's crazy. So it's like, man, Jay Hood to tell you. Jay Hood to tell you. Look, nigga, IHOP was a dangerous place because you can go to IHOP. There's only like, at that time, there was only like two IHOPs in Kansas City. You can go to the one in Grandview, or there was one up by like the football stadium. Nigga, it's, it's either or. And everybody went to either or. So it's like any given night, you being that motherfucker, you're going to have to fight some niggas, or you're going to have to shoot some niggas to make it out that bitch. That shit was dangerous as a motherfucker. Like there was only two of them. There was only two IHOPs at the time. We don't. So we got Waffle Houses in Kansas City, but it ain't Waffle Houses like down in Georgia. Like the Waffle Houses we got, they they terrible. Ain't nobody really fucking with them. So you go into IHOP in Kansas City, and nigga, we only had like two major ones. You had one up north, and then you had one down south. Nigga, you go to that one down south, oh, bro, you might fuck around and get killed in that bitch. Like, nigga, you had to be on your P's and Q's. Oh, or you go during the daytime. Don't go after like midnight. Cause you go in there, niggas is going there, and niggas is shooting inside that bitch. <laughs> Y'all niggas think we play like Kansas City is different. Look, Jay Hoodie, man, right. Better go do in the day if you want to eat. Like, dog, in the early 2000s, like the mid two, nigga, Kansas City was a goddamn war zone, nigga. I was beefing with so many niggas back then, nigga. Fuck that, nigga. You gotta order your food. And you couldn't park in that parking lot because if niggas, niggas know what your car you got, you park in that parking lot, niggas ain't even going to eat. They sitting next door. They waiting in the parking lot. And as soon as you niggas leave, brrr, nigga, man, Kansas City's ain't, man, y'all niggas think Kansas City's a goddamn joke. Nigga, get your ass knocked off out that bitch you fuck around in Kansas City. But shit, Kendall talking about, so why did I go there? Being it was dangerous because I was a real nigga. <laughs> I was a real nigga. I didn't give a fuck niggas was trying to kill me. Nigga, I was in the streets. I was out. I didn't give a fuck. Niggas was after me from goddamn 2004 to 2009. I'm out. I didn't give a fuck. You, I mean, you couldn't be no bitch ass nigga. You couldn't be the nigga that's dipping and hiding. You had to go out. You had to go out. Like, if you didn't go out, you a bitch-ass nigga. And ain't no girl gonna show you. Like, ain't no girl about to fuck with you. Or oh, I hear you high. Like, come on, man. Like, that's how Kansas City was. You had to be out. Even if niggas was after, you had to be out. If not, then it's like, man, you ain't gonna get no love. Niggas ain't showing you no respect. Let's 
look, look at DJ. Y'all forgot DJ 816. Nowhere in Kansas City to eat at night is safe. If we being honest, dog, you can go up, you can go up to like Westport, you can go to Crown Plaza, or dog, Kansas City was a fucking war zone at all times. I told y'all there was a moment in time in Kansas City where if you go down to Crown Plaza, there was 13 years old knocking out old folks into the fountains. That was what that was the games that they were playing. Kansas City is different. Y'all think that Kansas City, when I tell y'all, oh, I'm from Kansas City, it's some middle Midwest bullshit town. No, Kansas City is a fucking war zone at all times. The shit is not safe. Y'all think, like, when I tell y'all Kansas City, y'all like, oh, ain't nothing. Nigga, go to Kansas City and bullshit if you want to. Niggas will kill you out that motherfucker. That shit is fucking crazy. That's the life that we were living. Look, Jay Hoodie said, I stopped going to West. Listen, we used to go to Westport. There was a spot called American Pub. Nigga, I went to American Pub one time. Well, I, I've been I've been in there multiple times, but there was one time I went in the American pub. Do you know there was a guy that got in the American pub with a gun and fucking shot 14 people the night that I was in that bitch? That nigga, bah, 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 he ain't killed nobody. That nigga just in that bitch shooting. Like, nigga, I'm in this motherfucker trying to, I got a tall T on, nigga. Fuck Kent. Man, nah, I ain't gonna say fuck Kansas City because that's my city, but God damn, nigga, it's a fucking war zone out that bitch. I mean, that's how we was living, man. But hit that like button. We have five hours, man. This is pretty much the end of Meech's story. Uh, we got Meech. He told everybody he got to dip out to St. Louis. And the reason he got to dip to St. Louis is because, well, you know. <laughs> niggas is snitching. Greeny said that he had something to do with some shooting. And that's really all it is, man. <laughs>